Guardian? Eh, uno más, por favor. Hola, bon dia, and bon dia, and buenas noches, and hello everybody. Joel Hansen here, my good friend, Miss Alessandra. If you're not familiar, Alessandra is a longtime friend, subscriber, follower of the channel, guys. And uh, we've been lucky enough to spend some time here in Mexico. And today we're outside, Bem Brasileiro, which is essentially Brazilian. Brasileiro, I've learned in Spanish, is Brazilian. So here we are guys, Brazilian Steakhouse to have some delicious food. So this is an all you can eat, kind of Rodizio style Brazilian Steakhouse. We're here to try it. It does cost a whopping 200 pesos. Pesos a person, not $200, 200 pesos a person. So I'll let you know how much it actually is in American slash Canadian dollars. But at that, this, I don't know, I think it'll be good. I love meat. We're all about the picanha here, the carne, the pork, the chicken, the whatever. I'm sure they have a salad bar. Reviews seem pretty solid, so it's going in. Let's have some fun. Alessandra, ready to eat some food? Ready, let's go. So let's have some fun, guys. Brazilian Rodizio Steakhouse. I haven't been to one of these in forever. I love meat. This is my place. Let's go eat some food. Hey everyone, welcome to this video where today, here we are having some Rodizio, some Brazilian barbecue, guys. Some all-you-can-eat Brazilian f beef, meat sides etc guys so long 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 has this video been requested even though i already have a rodizio video on my channel i've already done an all you can eat um, brazilian barbecue video on my channel and i've done it many times outside of a video um, i am here doing it again because guess what i love it i love meat i love beef these are two things that just, oh my gosh, just it just speaks to me. And But really cool to be doing it here in Mexico. So I really did not know what to expect. The price of this ultimately was uh, 200 pesos. Um, and I was not really sure what to expect because of that. I didn't know if the quality was going to be like amazing. I didn't know, you know if I should have high expectations, low expectations. But I'll be honest, I went in with relatively low expectations. Um, just to, I guess, be on the safe side, I guess you could say. Um, but, you know, ultimately, starting off, the meats looked good. They were cooked perfectly. They were cooked like they were supposed to be. And the service was very, very, very good. In fact, the salad bar, although it was pretty basic, it even had some not too bad options. Um, but definitely, I think the uh, beef and the meats, at least to this point, were definitely the, uh, the what was standing out. I started off with some picanha. I went straight for the queen. Then we just had some uh, sirloin, which you saw the gentleman cut. Here we are trying a piece of a chicken and a garlic uh, covered uh, tenderloin. Um, so again, some pretty quality premium cuts, and I love meat. Picanha, the queen. So if you're unfamiliar how this style of restaurant or barbecue works, essentially you go up to the salad bar, you get a plate, start off with some sides, and they just walk around with the meat. Um, obviously you can tell them if you want stuff or you want them to stop coming by, you get as much as you want, it's all you can eat. So it's a really cool system. Flip me out with garlic, not bad. We got some sausage. The nice thing with it being all you can eat and them having a variety of meats is of course you can try all the different items and then ultimately decide what you want and kind of bank on that. Again, I knew going in this, picanha is generally my favorite. Uh, picanha is very similar to like a top sirloin cut, um, very large fat cap, but it is absolutely delicious. It is like a, it is a Brazilian pride um, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, again, when it comes to uh, like some of the more like, we'll say flank steaks or tenderloins, it really depends. You know, tenderloins can be absolutely fantastic, but like that garlic, it was not too bad. Um, the sausage was a little, you know, lackluster. And this chicken, it was okay. It wasn't bad, but it's just when things are getting over shun, let's say, you know, when, when you have the picanha, when you have, uh, you know, some of the other meats shining so brightly, you know, even if something is not too bad or it's okay, it, you know, it's just not, it doesn't stand out the same, understandably, right? I mean, you're comparing, you know, apples to oranges, I guess. Good service, good service, 
And that was definitely true. The service was very, very prompt. They were very attentive. And they can really, you know, the service can really make or break a Rodizio or all-you-can-eat Brazilian experience because you are dependent on them to get your items. Um, the salad bar currently, although normally it would be a buffet, kind of all-you-can-eat help yourself, it was offering cafeteria style just due to the uh, current conditions of the pandemic. But, you know, when you really are relying on the people bringing around the meat on the skewers to, uh, you know, essentially get you your meat, being attentive and then being on top of it was great and like i said this so far the variety that we saw was not too bad they had a couple salads here one i was really enjoying actually had coconut in it it was like um lettuce like a romaine lettuce with carrots it had uh, coconut but it was like a sweetened coconut like and like the dried coconut then it had some cranberries and stuff so it was a really like nice kind of sweet aspect to it of course when the gentleman came and offered me more beef of course i said yes um, you know, I will say this is not a time I was absolutely planning to destroy this. This is more just kind of a nice leisurely meal uh, with Miss Alessandra, really, really great friend, um, longtime subscriber of the channel. But Alessandra is a, you know, I thank her so much. She has, you know, shown us such hospitality down in San Diego, hospitality here in Mexico. Um, she's fluent in Spanish, which is absolutely fantastic and really does help, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, navigating around um, I, mean, I tell you being in Mexico in a like Merida itself and Cholul is not quite as touristy as like Cancun per se don't get me wrong Merida itself is definitely a, has a growing tourist um, population but it still really helps uh, you know if you are familiar with the language I do not speak Spanish I'm learning little bits of it I'm trying my best poquito um, but you know definitely having somebody who speaks Spanish is excellent So back to that beautiful picanha, like I said guys, that fat cap, oh just that beautiful beef. And like I said guys, they were cooking it perfectly. Um, I will say like generally you would never remove the fat cap off picanha, that would be literally seen as like sacrilegious. I will say though, for like this piece here, the way the gentleman cut it was not just to the, the large open face, but literally kind of uh, on the side, on the thin side. So he literally did kind of cut me some pieces which were pure fat cap. Um, like pure, pure, pure fat cap, which don't get me wrong, it's nice, but I did, you know, want the pieces with the meat and the fat cap together, you know, kind of the more traditional cut along the face, which he did do some of that, um, but I, I'm not going to lie, there's definitely little bits um, where I removed a little bit of the fat. Like I said, I was not trying to uh, splurge, this was not a, a cheat meal per se, this is more just a standard meal with Joel um, at a Brazilian all you can eat, and especially, like I said, although the fat pure fat cap was delicious those pieces um i wanted the mixture of the fat and the meat together because it's just oh it's just so good the salt on it just oh i love it i love beef guys cows are the best animal if you have differ have a different opinion let me know down below but i'm serious guys i'm team beef all the way hashtag team beef best animals ever tastiest animals ever yeah i like the, i like the girl pineapple So I went up to the salad bar and Alessandro, knowing me oh so well, um, got some of the meats that they brought around for me, which is super awesome. And this one they called a pork picanha. And I tell you what, although I've never heard of a pork picanha per se, it was absolutely delicious. There's like a bit of a kind of tomato-y, chili-ish sauce on this pork. Um, otherwise I'd call it, you know, kind of just like a pork loin essentially, but loved the sauce, loved the flavor, just a little bit of heat but just lots and lots and lots of excellent, excellent, delicious spices. And then there was a, uh, another kind of meat, which was had like a brown glaze on it. And in all reality, it, which is this one right here, it just kind of tasted like, a, I don't know, like a honey garlic sauce, something along those lines. And it was also pork. So I will say that what they called the pork picanha, excellent, love that spice. This one just kind of reminded me of like a honey garlic sauce, which a little, a little lackluster um, comparatively, but still not too bad. Favorito. Mande? Favorito. Ah, bueno. 
Here we are back with the queen, the Picanha, and I was just taking all he would give me. Um, all the deliciousness that, uh, that has to offer, and all that beautiful, savory, fatty, lovely beefiness. Just, ugh. Right in. In regards to the salad bar, what I was digging into, uh, besides, of course, the lovely picanha, was a uh, green salad. I really liked my salads. I had some cooked broccoli there. I was going with a low-fat, uh, kind of like uh, French dressing, um, which I really like French dressing. I like Italian dressings. I like all kinds of salad dressings. Um, actually, my all-time favorite salad dressing, though, is a, uh, I think my all-time, hmm, I'm going to say my all-time favorite is a poppy seed dressing. Big fan of poppy seed salad dressing. I'm also a big fan of vegetables, if you're not familiar, and this is what I do whenever I go to buffets or all-you-can-eats. I generally focus on the meats and the veggies. Those are not only some of the most expensive, um, but also some of my favorite items, and that's how you really get your values worth, you know, not filling up on, like, potato dishes and or, you know, just buns and breads, you know. Go for the expensive or the more pricey items, the meats for sure, followed by veggies, um, often, if they have desserts, desserts can be quite pricey. This wasn't really a, they didn't really have desserts here per se. Um, the closest thing, I guess, would be the fruits and the pineapple, also which I very, very much enjoy, just because I love those things, I love fruit, and it's also, again, arguably a more pricey item comparatively to some of the um, other items. Although, of course, uh, it's kind of interesting to consider that, you know, what I would consider expensive items in North America or in Canada or USA might or might not be considered expensive items in Mexico. So something to consider whenever you are traveling, and especially when you are working with seasonality. Um, seasons play a big part in item price, and at the perfect timing, we had some uh, some more beef. This is a uh, top sirloin or a sirloin roast, um, which I said was, it was one of, it was, a, it was a solid one. It was one that I would get. Some of the ones they brought around, I would pass like the sausage, but I do like the beef. And uh, I love that, oh, just that, that way that fat glazes over, that salt on the outside, just, mm, oh, oh, okay. Like I said, guys, beef is just so good, just so good. I also had more of that uh, coconut salad I spoke of earlier. I was definitely really enjoying that. Um, I just, like I said, guys, I just, I love salads, I love vegetables, and I mean, if they taste like extra, extra good, they already taste good enough by themselves, but, you know, a little bit of dressing, a little bit of additions, like coconut, like, Hell right. Plus, I love coconut. Coconut's one of my favorite flavors. Um, oh, just like I said, guys, just just too good. Just just too good. So here, I then had a very basic green salad, and I also had um, kind of a bit of a mustard uh, mayonnaise kind of style of dish they had, um, kind of like a like a mixed coleslaw kind of thing. Um, but it was definitely like a good mustard base. The other thing was mayonnaise in it. Um, Alessandra gave it a try and she thought it was all right. Um, in regards to Alessandra's plate, she had some more of that vegetable, which I don't remember the name of. Uh, Alessandra couldn't remember it either. And Google just steers me wrong. But it's a very like almost flavorless root vegetable, which they put tahini on. Um, tahini is like a kind of a chili, lime, and salt uh, spice. Um, it's like that red seasoning. They often put on a number of fruits as well, such as like watermelon, mangoes. Um, it's really good, I like it. It's definitely a unique flavor. I've definitely seen it in the Southern United States, and then of course in Mexico here. She also had some plantains. Um, plantains, if you're not familiar, kind of like a banana. Um, however often cooked to which hers were as well and then served a lot of uh, often warm and or with a sweetened condensed milk at least in Mexico we had yogurts sweetened condensed milk and uh, I believe even like a little bit of cheese I've seen on the uh, plantains throughout my travels in Mexico and it's all really really good it's kind of like a half you know dessert and yet not dessert because they kind of treat it like a main dish but with a little bit of sweetness, I guess you could say. I'd say kind of comparable to like a sweet potato pie or, you know, a sweet potato casserole in uh, potentially some American cooking. I 
I really don't think any explanation is needed. Like I said, guys, just it's it's picanha. It is delicious, fatty, salty beef. Um, and then here we had what they were calling the pork picanha. So I was able to ask the server with Alessandra's help um, for my my favorites being the picanha and the pork picanha, what they called. And luckily they were able to bring it. Like I said, it although yeah, like it wasn't very busy in there. This was like maybe like a Tuesday evening, um, just like a standard day of the week. Um, but there was tables like that were left right before we arrived, tables that arrived right after we were leaving. Um, so they definitely had some traffic. But like I said, guys, the staff were really excellent. I'll actually mention that the quality of meats here were really, really good as well overall. Um, this was again 200 pesos per person, um, whereas I went to a nether rodizio in uh, Playa del Carmen, um, where I paid 740 pesos. Um, and I will say this was actually much better. The quality of the meats were better, the service was much better, and here they were cooked properly. Everything at the other one was overcooked. Um, the place was called Bovino's. It's not often I would never recommend a place, but if you're ever in Playa del Carmen, I would not recommend Bovino's at all. I had a very unpleasant experience, um, just with the, just absolutely subpar. Um, again, even compared to this, which is literally a quarter of the price, this was far, far, far better. Um, so yeah, I don't recommend Bovino's, but I do recommend this Brazil, um, or Bam Brasileiro, or, you know, however you pronounce the name. Again, sorry for my mispronunciations, but definitely recommend this place. The staff were great. The food is really, really good. No complaints. Um, honestly, I would say this overall experience, um, at least with the meats and the service, was very much on par with some that I've paid um, 60 $70 for in North America. I will say the salad bar was uh, a little bit lackluster compared to that $70, $60 price tag, but for a place which costs, let's say, $15 Canadian or, you know, uh, yeah, 12 let's say 13 to $15 Canadian compared to $60 Canadian, the price to value ratio here was absolutely phenomenal. So come here, there's two locations in Merida, don't go to Bovino's in Playa del Carmen, and with that, I'll let you enjoy the rest of the video. There's a little bit of tomato in that one. I tasted it there. Picanha is by far the best. It is the queen. This is the Brazilian queen. Oh. So soft, so rich, so savory. Look at that fat cap. So much fat, but it's deliciously rendered. The salt is just the best. There's big grains on there, big grain salt. Rich, succulent, not good for your arteries, but so good. So here we got a plantain plantain which is fried with a sweetened condensed milk so it's like dessert sweet salty yeah sweet and salty pretty good so where's joel needs to work Mm. 
and just in case a little bit of an explanation is needed, of course I like sweet things, so I had fruit for dessert, the watermelon was really fantastic, they had the melon, they had the grilled pineapple there, um, and the grapefruit, but I figured, you know, I just go with what was good, so I gotta try a little bit of everything, and what was best was the watermelon. But uh, yeah, I thought this was pretty self-explanatory, but just in case you're wondering what was going on, had some fruit, close it off, a little bit of sweet taste. And look at the beautiful water guys, two-toned with the sun, just absolutely gorgeous. Looks like a tropical, par tropical paradise. So everybody, they were down here in Celestun. I got a hat and a sombrero on, so I'm very, uh, I'm very well prepared. Celestun, I actually got a little, little more sun I think than I should have yesterday. A little tender on my face, but very beautiful down here. I, I guess like it definitely, yeah, the vibes I'm getting driving through it definitely tailor a little bit towards tourists. There's definitely some other gringos. Gringos. There's other some uh, tourists around, that's for sure. But yeah, very beautiful. Some of the fans getting marquesitas. And uh, yeah, this is, it's a beautiful, beautiful day, guys. I'm gonna just put some sunscreen on, but Celestun. Muy bien. Very, very beautiful. Local, local, hay otro más y el otro que es otro igual alto como este, que se llama los pámpanos. Igual es bueno, pero yo, pues yo, yo te diría, pues uno bueno, 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 pues la, la playita y la palapa. La playita y la palapa. Sí. Aquí en la palapa, con certeza, todo lo que vas a comer es por esto, porque el dueño de la palapa es dueño de bodega. ¿Te acuerdas que llegamos, Fanny? Él está muy bien, supermercado. No, 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 bodega me refiero a que, a que ¿cómo se llama? Es dueño de, de, de barcos de pesca. Ah, mm. ok. ¿Quieres? Ah, ¿y vende pescado o qué? Es el dueño de la, de, de la palapa del restaurante. Se dedica a comercializar y comprar pescado. Ah, okay. And the amazing benefit of having Italians in Mexico. Look at this, guys. This is actually pasta being handmade. This is not something I've ever seen before, not something I've ever enjoyed before, but this is going to be an experience, I am sure. So this is how pasta is handmade. So apparently they make the, I'll call it a dough, essentially a dough, and then they're gonna hand cut it. So that's pretty dang cool. So hand cut pasta, dough, etc. can't beat that. Ah. Stuck together? Yeah, we have to just put more flour. So it flattens it out. Mm -hmm. and, then you'll, and then you'll cut it. After like 50 times of going through the machine. Nice. Delicate process. Time consuming. Tiene cien niños, nace en México. 
Pero. And that's fresh squeezed juice, and it is so delicious. Too, too delicious. Say hola, Emma. <laughs> this is my amiga, Emma. And this is ch little Chiquita. Say hi. Hola. Eating, eating chalk, apparently. And how can something that is so cute, I guess that's cute, make such a mess? What do you do? Smile, smile for me. Let's see your teeth. Oh, it looks great. Yeah, you are so clean. Look at those hands. And look at that little face of yours. You got it all in your mouth, eh? Wow. You are not dirty at all. Smile. Smile. Let's see your teeth. Smile. Smile. Wow. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you click my face right here, you can subscribe. Yes, that's right. Click my face, subscribe, guys. It helps me out, it helps you out. Then you don't miss an upload. And hopefully, I can meet you when I come to your city. Also, click a video right here. I specifically pick two videos. Yes, that's right. Two videos specifically for you right here. So click a video right now. Get that going, and it's going to end. So click one quick. Let's go. Let's go. And have a great day.